how did you actually hook hook up with with Eminem then? Because you did a couple of mixtapes and then you woke up with with him, with M and then yeah, I, um, I I put music out on the mixtape circuit. We we released over four albums worth of material prior to Get Rich or Die Trying, but one of the mixtapes that we put out had got into the hands of Paul Rosenberg, who was Eminem's representation at the time. Theo Stedemeyer, who's my attorney, has a relationship with him. He gave it to Paul, and Paul gave it to M. And um, M was in the middle of finishing up the Eminem show, so he wasn't able to listen to it. While he's working on his records, he doesn't listen to any outside music because it influences, you know, his input, on his input so on his own music. So he, he doesn't do that. And um, after he completed his record, he got a chance to listen to it. He was so excited about it, he flew me out to Los Angeles. Okay. I had deals on the table prior to that. But I wasn't in a hurry because this would be my third record deal. Oh, okay. You know, so I was like, I wanted to make sure I made the right deal this time around. Mm. And I did, you know. Uh, how was it to work with guys like like Dr. Dre and Eminem? Because it's like a dream come true? or Absolutely. I'm a part of, this is the dream team right here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, Shady <laughs> Aftermath G Unit. It's the, uh, that's how it goes, you know. I mean, M is a perfectionist. You know, and I believe he gets that from rubbing elbows with Dre. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and the same thing, you know, is is rubbing off on me. Like, there's a certain standard of quality material that we feel like is we have to live up to mm-hmm. when we start putting material out on the street. I feel like the the bootlegging and the downloading of music is because the people are afraid of purchasing a CD for sixteen ninety nine. It only has two good songs on it. Mm-hmm. You know, so. Eminem's sales aren't struggling, Dr. Dre's sales aren't struggling, and my sales aren't struggling. It's because we keep our music up to the standards that make people comfortable with spending that sixteen yeah, dollars yeah, yeah. to buy the CD. You know, they know they're gonna hear the whole record is good. Mm. You know, so it's okay. cool. Yeah, one track I really like um, is one um, "Many Men," also a production of Dr. Dre. Yeah. And uh, where is it about? Because the the, the chorus uh, is is just uh, in my head repeating, yeah, but uh, from me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that me. record is the spiritual record on that album. Like the okay. this is many men wish death upon me, blood in my eye, dog, and I can't see. Yeah, yeah, I'm cool. trying to be what I'm destined to be, and niggas yeah. trying to take my life away. Yeah, that's nice. You know, oh. it's cool, man. I, I just it's a direct reflection of the environment I'm from. My music, you know, and because we're from the same environment, me, Lloyd Banks, Tony Ayo, like our music kind of coincides with it. The without us being in the same room, the, the the topics that we come up with coincide with each other. So we're able to write records without even being sitting next to each other while we're doing it. Mm-hmm. Buck as the Southern feel to it. He has his own mm-hmm. slang. He says things in a different way. So he. He he stands out like a sore thumb on the record. You know he fits in with us as far as the lyrical content, but he stands out with his tones. Okay. Yeah.